Oh god in heaven, Connie. I cut the couch. In today's video, I am going to be attempting to whittle. Why? Because I'm curious about it. <laughs> I have noticed that this is a trend for me. I'm really curious about lots of different hobbies. I really love arts and crafts, right? Doing stuff at home, on your own, doing a hobby craft, I think is so beautiful and cool and interesting. And there are a few that I do on my own, stuff like bookbinding, but there's a thousand things out there that I wanna try. The problem is I kinda never seem to have the time. If I make it a YouTube series, <laughs> it can be my job, but I also just get to then do the hobbies. So today we are embarking on this journey where I'm gonna try a hobby for a week and we're gonna see if I like it or not. I have devised a complicated rubric <laughs> that's going to rank lots of different elements about the hobby. Is it easy? Is it challenging? Is it expensive? Does it make a big mess? But the main thing is I just want to, for a week, every day, whittle. So of course, the first thing I had to do was go and get some whittling supplies. Hello everyone, we're in my Jeep and I have come to Lee Valley. The last time I was here, it was to get that piece of hardware for the bathroom door, which was so beautiful. This is such an interesting shop. It has hardware, like little metal things, but woodworking things, gardening things. I remember coming here a lot as a kid because it was a shop where my dad would get a lot of stuff. Um, but I feel like we're in the right spot because literally right outside it says woodworking tools. <laughs> I'm back in the car and I got two things um, and I do have the receipt with me because cost is going to be a part of how we determine this hobby. I got this knife. I'll talk about this when I'm sitting at home but I, I for some reason didn't think about how I'm just buying a knife. Like I feel very cowboy-esque. <laughs> the packaging! The packaging! Um, and I also got little blocks of wood, which were kind of expensive, but again, we'll talk about that at home. But I got the goods and I'm excited to go home and figure this all out. <laughs> and so with my successful mission, I have the supplies that I need, a knife and some wood. Um, for some reason, I really thought <laughs> there would be a lot more that I needed, but, I think that's just because like with one of my favorite hobbies, like I mentioned, bookbinding, there's so many tools that you need. You need so many tools. You need so many different things. Um, and I really, I love this. So far on the supplies front, this is doing really well. This was a bit of an investment. As you can imagine, the knife wasn't super cheap, but I also like how small this is, right? Like if I just take this, and I just take this, like if I just took those two things in my purse or something, that is pretty low key. Also, like you could just use a stick from outside, but in my research um, and in my talkings with the people at the shop, they definitely recommended that I start with this kind of wood, which is basswood because it's so easy to cut and so it will be like more beginner friendly. It did feel insane spending $16 on this little wood though. Um, that's, that's wild. <laughs> I love the packaging here. Like they know who the intended audience is. Wanna be cowboys, uh, which I am. I was born in Calgary. So I've also read two Westerns this year, True Grit and Outlawed, and they were both amazing. And so maybe that's part of the reason I want to whittle. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> it also, like, I think I said this in the car, um, but 
it felt insane to just buy a knife. Like, in my mind, I was buying wood carving tools. That somehow was very different than just buying a pocket knife. But no, I just bought a pocket knife, which is fine, but it just, already this is feeling crazy. <laughs> okay, so I think the first thing that I need to do is figure out what I want to whittle. Welcome to my desk where we are going to figure out what my first whittling project is going to be and we're going to figure it out with help from today's sponsor who is Millinote. Millinote is a tool for organizing your creative projects. It lets you collect notes, images, videos, tasks, and even gifts all in one place. Here is my board for my whittling project. So one of my favorite aspects of Milanote so far is doing to-do lists because my entire brain works on to-do lists. So I am able to make as many to-do lists as I possibly want. Here we've got what I need to prep, which is to get the knife, uh, check, get the wood pieces, check back on my home page we also have my mood board where i have collected a bunch of images and my main inspiration which is to be like ron swanson <laughs> if you want to try millinote out for yourself to help you organize a creative project use my link down in the description to get it for free with no time limit thanks so much to millinote for sponsoring this video and now i've got a whittle <laughs> Okay, let's go make a bird. Well, everyone, it's time to do the thing and whittle. It is the next day from when I set up this whole affair. <laughs> and um, yeah, I honestly didn't feel like doing this today. I was like, I think I'm gonna put it off till tomorrow. But I was like, no, Ariel, that's literally the point of the series is to like, jam a hobby into your everyday, which is what I'm really struggling with doing. There's so many things I wanna try doing, but I never get the time. So even if I'm feeling kind of tired from the day, we're gonna do this thing. So the first thing is safety, because obviously we have a knife involved. So I have this leather glove. It's a complete precaution because I should never be cutting towards myself anyways. What does a bird look like? <laughs> uh. I think I made his head too big. It's sort of a bird. Hopefully that looks a little like a bird to you. I'm imagining that this is gonna feel really satisfying. But what if it's really difficult? Okay. Here we go, guys. This is the inaugural cut. Okay, hold on. I need to change the camera. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna use the edge of my armchair here. Ooh, it's harder than I would have imagined. I'm gonna make a giant mess. Oh yeah, I definitely would have imagined this being easier. Okay, okay, if you dig down a bit, and then, oh. That's, guys, this is harder than I would have thought. Here I was thinking I'd be carving like a thingy a day. Now I feel like readjusting that. I feel like it might take me the whole week to make this one little bird. <laughs> this is also gonna be one of those things where like real whittlers watch this and are extremely disappointed. I have a friend who does wood carving and she was telling me that I might find it helpful to clamp the thing that I'm, the piece of wood that I'm working on down. Um, and then carve away at it. And I think she could be right. This requires a lot more upper body strength than I was imagining. Okay, I feel like over here, I'm not carving it. I'm just ripping it. Maybe it's about expecting less from every 
curve. Okay, that's satisfying. Yeah, that's nice. Oh God in heaven, Connie. I cut the couch. You I, should put a little towel down. I didn't think about that as a consequence. I think I can be more cognizant of it. How would I fix that? Glue it down. I've only been at it for, I wanna say 15 minutes. Already I have a few observations. First of all, it hurts this hand more than it hurts this hand. Cause this hand is just doing a, like a precision swipe cut. This hand is like trying to grip it into place so that the piece of wood doesn't go shooting off. So that's right now the trickiest part. Um, I've also noticed I was, I had kind of my thumb back here or back here, having it on the actual blade feels like a lot more precision. One thing that's happening, and it's a classic, <laughs> is that now that I'm learning how to do this, it's a game, it's giving me so much more respect for carved wooden things that I've seen in shops. When I am buying a hand knitted sweater or something, I've got so much respect for the whole peeps because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that took a long time and the yarn was expensive and the whole shebang. I think I've <clears throat> underestimated like wooden spoons. Okay, that's better. <laughs> this is one of those zoom out moments. This is what I've achieved in 20 minutes. Barely anything. I will say one, maybe this is one criteria I'd add to the end rubric. I do like thinking about like when I'm doing a hobby, how engrossed am I? Cause there's some things that are like, for me, really mindless, like knitting. I'm just like, you, once you start knitting, you're like a machine. So you can like do other stuff. You can like watch TV or you can, read an audiobook, but then like, I remember when I was doing pottery, I found it really in, like engaging. And what was cool about that was that like, I stopped thinking about my life and my job and my responsibilities or whatever. I was just like in, I was in the clay. <laughs> and while I'm doing this guy, I'm definitely not thinking about much about much else. Oh, <gasps> you see, that's bad. I just broke it. Okay. Hmm. Can you text me the words amount of focus needed and danger? Yes. yes. Thank you. Those could be possible things on my rubric of how to judge a hobby. Good morning. So it is the next day, day two of whittling, and I'm gonna try a slightly different approach. I'm going, I've put these boards up to, my desk has this like, backboard. So I've pushed these guys up against the backboard and I'm going to use this a little bit as a brace so that I'm doing less pressure on my left hand and I can sort of push against this instead of feeling like I have to be holding all the pressure in this hand. Today is also George Orwell's birthday. So I've read a couple of essays today and we'll hopefully read a couple more later. That's irrelevant to this video. Thought I'd let you know though. I am looking forward to finishing this bird though. Like I realized when I woke up, I was like, oh yeah, today I get to do my, I get to whittle. So I'm having fun. I 
made his beak. Look at his little beak. Oh my god. Oh my god. Something I'm definitely kind of thinking about is wood grain. Like, sometimes the wood is easier to cut than other times. And I'm sure that's when I'm like going with the grain versus going against it. But I can't quite tell yet why that would be good or bad, you know? Do you think it should be able to stand? Oh, great. Vení ver qué hice. Wow. Hice este tiny pájaro. Pajarito, my god, it's adorable. <laughs> y lo hiciste a puro cuchillo. Yep. Wow. You're so messy ahí arriba. Oh, really? Yeah. So one of the things that attracted me to whittling was the idea of doing it outside. It feels like a very outdoorsy thing. It's just you and a piece of wood. And I thought it would be lovely, but of course it's been the rainiest week ever. It's been nonstop rain for a week. And the forecast shows nothing but more rain for the next few days. So we're having a moment of relative calm. The rain has eased up a bit. And so I thought I'd start the next project outside on my little picnic table. I'm going to make a mushroom. I drew it out. I think it'll be similarly difficult to the bird. I actually just walked past a mushroom, just like literally six feet away. I'll show you guys. And I was like, that's right. That's our inspiration. <laughs> Okay, the top of the mushroom is there. It looks like a tree. I feel like all the birds screaming at me aren't playing a long game here. Because they can use my little wood chips for their nest if they want afterwards. Okay, we've come to the final day for whittling. Um, we've built a bird, <laughs> we've made a mushroom, and now I'm going to build a little house. I love miniature houses. I have a little ceramic one, I have some little tin ones, and I think a little wooden house would be a lovely final project. So I'm going to hopefully make that now spend some time making it, and then we'll do a big wrap up with the rubric at the end. I thought I'd recorded myself doing the first cuts and I forgot to. So here we are now. <laughs> I've started on the roof line.
I keep thinking about that quotation from, well, I think it's attributed to Michelangelo, but like there's no way he said it. The like, how do you carve a man? And then he responds, you just chip away everything that doesn't look like a man. I kind of get it. <laughs> like, you just think you know what it's supposed to look like, so you just keep chipping away at stuff that doesn't look like it's supposed to be there. I didn't think I would be painting when I first did this whittling project, but it ended up kind of being my favorite part. It was really satisfying, quite easy, but impactful, and it made the items look so much more like what I was aiming them to look like. Obviously, I'm a super beginner when it comes to whittling, so the painting made it seem a lot more recognizable as a mushroom, a house, or a bird. Here we are at the end of all things. I am so excited. We whittled, <laughs> we did it. Over here we have my little bird, my little mushroom and my tiny house. And I'm thrilled with all of them. I had so much fun this week learning a new craft, but now it's time to do the rubric. So I've put together basically a questionnaire to solidify my thoughts. And because I wanna make more of these videos, trying different hobbies, and then we can kind of compare and contrast a lot of the different categories. So the first question is, is it fun? I think this is where we should start because that's the most important thing. All the other things are details. This is kind of why you do a hobby. Do you have fun doing it? I would give this a 6.5 out of 10. It honestly didn't spark as much joy as I thought it was going to do. So moving on to how challenging is this? I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. So again, these are all completely subjective, but when I think of a really challenging hobby, I think of pottery. Pottery is really, really tough. Like it was, like two weeks of just learning how to center the clay. You're not even building anything. You're just learning how to put the clay in the middle of the wheel. I would give pottery like a nine. Knitting, once you learn the one pattern, it's so easy. You're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Of course, we're talking about the one stitch. It can get more challenging, but as a beginner, we're talking about like, as a beginner, is it challenging? I would say this was pretty challenging. It was hard to get the shapes that I wanted. It was hard to um, do it and have it be easy and kind of simple and fun. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Is it expensive? So the options are cheap, moderate, or expensive. I would say cheap. You have an upfront cost of getting the knife and then you can buy wood or you can just find wood outside like a stick. So <laughs> I would actually say that this is a pretty cheap hobby. The only thing you'll have to do is buy a type of stone to sharpen your knife occasionally. But again, that's just two things that you have to buy and you can last a long time with them. The next question, the end product. This is really important to me. This is why, for example, I personally don't really enjoy puzzling because at the end you've finished this pretty picture and then you just tear it apart and put it back in a box. So I'm like, I like doing a hobby that has an end product at the end of it. So for a not useful product at the end, a mildly useful or a very useful, which might be like a sweater that you made, that you can like literally wear all of the time now. I would put this at mildly useful. You could like really get into production with these things and like do them as gifts or like I turn the little bird into an ornament. So there's certain things that you could definitely do with whittling or you can make spoons, of course, and then you can use your own spoons to cook, which is awesome. So I would, go, I would say mildly useful. Next up, is it messy? Just yes, no, because obviously there's varying degrees, but I would say, yeah, it kind of was messy. I left, <laughs> I just finished the little house. So I left all of the uh, the wood chips around to kind of 
show. Every time I whittled, I made a big mess. And outside when I did it, it was totally fine. It, it's like, it can just become part of the grass and nature, but I would not want to do this on a bus. Obviously there's the whole knife component as well, but like I wouldn't go to a public park and do this either. So it's kind of messy and I don't really like cleanup. <laughs> Setup and takedown time, I'm just gonna say a minute. Like, no time at all. You just have to find your glove, find your knife, find your piece of wood, and that's it. You can get started, which is awesome. I love that. Is it portable? Very portable. On a scale of very portable, sort of portable or not portable, I would say very portable. Everything is so small. One thing I really like is the idea of portability with hobbies. Like, can you put it all in a pencil case and like put it in your backpack and go? Yes, this was really easy. Like, I love that every time I was like, I need to whittle. I just had to, I could pick everything up that I needed in one hand. It's so, so portable. Can it be done outdoors? Yes, and I love that. You can totally do this outdoors. And I will say I enjoyed doing it outdoors more than indoors. It felt like a nature thing because you're, you're cutting wood. It felt nature <laughs> forward. Is it painful? This is going to be a particularly subjective one. Because of my Ehlers-Danlos, I have a lot of joint pain. And so if I'm choosing a hobby, I want it to be something that's really easy on my joints and doesn't take a lot of strength. I would say that this was a bit painful. It wasn't very painful. You know what I found very painful? Pottery. <laughs> I didn't really like pottery. <laughs> I found it painful because it's so hard on your wrists. Like you really have to be like very strong and, and blocky. And I was just not able to do that. With this, there were certain things, but by bracing against pieces of wood or against the side of a table or a chair, I was able to, it wasn't that bad, but I did have sore wrists on some of the days. Danger, no danger, a little bit of danger or very dangerous. I would actually put this in very dangerous. You, This was part of the reason why you kind of really had to focus because if you didn't, you could have a really big mistake. And I hilariously cut my chair and that's fine. Like I can easily fix that. But obviously that could have been a way bigger disaster. One of the reasons I don't think that I would enjoy whittling long-term as like a brand new hobby for me is because I constantly was a little worried that I would do something dangerous. And the final category that I created is the amount of focus needed. Some hobbies I find that you can do them while consuming another whole piece of art, like watching a movie or something. Other hobbies are so consuming that you literally can't do anything else while you do it because you have to be so focused and in the zone. And I don't think this is a good or bad thing. This is just like, a, a, there are different types of activities. Like with me knitting, I can watch a whole movie while I knit. But with like book binding, I can barely have music on because I'm like having to focus so much on each of the steps. So my spectrum is you can watch a whole movie while you're doing it, or you could listen to a podcast. So like, it's okay if you miss a couple sentences because, oh, you have to really focus for a sec. No, okay, you're zoned back into the podcast. It's a bit more in and out or you can listen to music. Like it's only a background thing that you could possibly put on. I think at the extreme end also, I would add, you just need complete focus. I would put this somewhere between you can listen to a podcast and you can listen to music, probably listen to a podcast. Like you can zone out while you're doing it, but you do have to keep focus to keep safe. The rubric is not meant to say whittling is good or whittling is bad. It's to give you guys loads of information on the different areas of this as a hobby and how I felt about it. Overall, I would say I enjoyed my week of whittling. I had fun carving. I love working with wood, which I knew because I've done some carpentry stuff for my house. And so I really do enjoy working with wood, but on this small scale and with a knife so close, I didn't find it to be the most fun. I also feel like the end products aren't the most useful. Like I'm like, how many tiny mushrooms can I make before I'm like, what do I do with these? I'm already like, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this tiny mushroom. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and joining me for my whittling journey. And I'm excited to make another one and try out another hobby. Let me know in the comments, what hobby should I try out next? I already have a whole list of things I wanna try out, but I'm always game to hear what you guys think. But also what criteria should I maybe add to my rubric? Like what kind of information would it be useful for you guys to learn about? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.